So Anthony, why is responsible business important to your company? It's really, really important that um, we instill in our staff here the vision and values that we have in our firm. It's part of our culture to give something back to society. The communities in which we live could be our future clients, um, but also it's the people that we wish to support. And so it, from top to bottom in this firm, we absolutely instill in each of our employees, be they lawyers or support staff, the right and our vision to support the communities in which we work across the world. And it helps the, um, the diversity in our, in our workforce, which we encourage, to recognise the diversity and the issues which are faced in the local communities. Often those that are less fortunate for many of our staff, they haven't had the opportunities and it's very important to us to try and give others the opportunities that our staff have been lucky enough to have. Why did you decide to take a leadership role at BITC? I was very proud to be invited to become a member of the leadership uh, panel. For me it's all about what I personally believe in uh, and what my firm believes in. And in order to assist others to achieve those goals and that, that the values that I personally have and hold and my firm has as well and to encourage other firms and organisations to participate and also make that difference and companies are very very powerful in the, the people that work for them in to instill the, the ethos if you like of giving something back to others and it, I think by leaders of organisations actually working together that's an incredible Incredible, incredibly powerful force in which to bring about change and so I was very proud to be part of that and to work with others in order to achieve that. What difference do you think the London team can make? There are areas in London that are really suffering tremendous social deprivation. Um, you know it's a very very large population in London and I think a lot of it is hidden and not understood by those that are in employment and work in more affluent areas. And I think by focusing in those particular areas, such as obviously the, the areas around the site of the Olympics and the initiatives that are being undertaken there by BITC and by many on the London Leadership Panel, I think that we can make, we can make a, a real change for the future by working together and focusing in those areas. The recent riots is a very, very good example which you know, gives leaders an understanding of just how much um, resentment, anger and feeling there is and I think business leaders need to understand that and need to understand how actually working together they can bring about change. What is your vision for London? London is key for the UK economy. We mustn't lose sight of that because if we don't support London and the UK economy and that growth and make sure that all benefit from that then we will fail in trying to help those who are desperately in need. Therefore, I want to see London to, to, to be a success story and continue in its success. It's very, very important that businesses understand that. The investment in London is really important to the whole of the UK economy. But ensuring in that investment, actually, that everyone benefits from it, not just the few. How are you supporting the future leaders at Eversheds to be responsible leaders? This starts right from the executive of Eversheds down to the person who is doing the loneliest job, if you like. But I don't think personally, I don't think any job is lonely. I should hasten to add. But if you know what I mean, it's from the most junior person to the most senior person in the organisation. And we encourage volunteering in our, in, with our employees by giving 50 hours corporate responsibility time to those individuals. They can use that to support a charity of their choice or one of the many charities in which Eversha support, business and the community activities, whatever they choose to do, those hours count towards it. They count towards their bonus as if it were chargeable time, as if the firm was getting financial reward as a result of that. We think that 50 hours does give that encouragement. But I have to say that people joining our organisation now already have instilled within them. And I think it's probably, I don't know, the YZ group, I don't know what we, where we are now. But I think, you know, many now 
are looking for an organisation that provide that support so they can give something back to their communities. We also support um, various uh, groups such as our gender group, diversity group and others in order to change the way people feel, think and work both within the organisation and outside. And by doing that throughout the organisation and instilling in them that that is our value, they are our value rather. That means that as they grow through the organisation, it's very much part and parcel of how they feel and how they feel um, they will progress and be recognised, um, not just for the expertise they might have in their particular area or skill, but just uh, the fact that they are giving something back. And this is what you know our clients believe in, we believe in. What are the future challenges facing our industry and how can responsible business practices help to address them? I'd like to focus on two areas which I think are really important. One is gender, which I know a lot of industries, um, including the legal profession, are focusing on, but also opportunity. Opportunity to become a lawyer is really confined to a small class of people, those who have been to the right school, have um, family or friends who have followed that career path and so they have an example in which to follow, understand the procedures and the way in which they can achieve that. And certainly my experience is that a large percentage of the legal profession come from that background. Far fewer come from a background where they, they come from perhaps a, they haven't had the, the right education, they haven't had the opportunities. And so my firm has launched a, a programme called Emishes Unlocked, which is very much to work with schools, with those children who are actually coming through, they think they'd like a career in the law, but they don't understand how they achieve it. And so we mentor them right the way through that process and help them at every stage. Uh, we started this program a year ago, so the first, sorry, two years ago, so the first group are coming through now, but obviously, you know, we'll see how that progresses. Um, we believe it is so far looking very good. Um, certainly the individuals that we're helping, the, um, the youths that are coming through, um, really say to us this is a fantastic benefit just to understand exactly what we've got to do, how we go through the um, interview procedure, um, the, the qualifications we need, how we need, how we work at that and the experience we need. And just taking them through each stage gives them fantastic hopefully a fantastic opportunity to build a career. We're not trying to persuade people to become lawyers because <laughs> it's not that easy. It's not as easy as people would imagine. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard work. They've got to really want to do it. But it, it's understanding what's possible for them, which they may, may have thought, I can't achieve this. Um, and it's given them that opportunity. Gender, we work very, very closely with government. There's a program that the government have, have set up called Voluntary Gender Reporting uh, Initiative, which um, BT have signed up to and Tesco, and we're part of that and support that. Um, recently, we've just had our, our board for uh, promotions. 41% uh, were female came through our board for partnership. Um, very, very supportive of uh, looking at different, different initiatives to support um, those that perhaps have, for whatever reason, can't actually uh, provide the input that a, that a male could provide because of children or whatever, and to su and give support to, to, to those women so that they have the same opportunities as men. Now BITC is in its 30th year, how can it scale up its activities? I think it's like any organisation, it has to remain really focused on what it's doing. It is very easy with all the challenges and issues that uh, we face in this world um, to get diverted. It only has limited resource. The members only have limited resources. And therefore it is really important for it to focus properly on those issues that really will make a difference. In addition, there are so many other charities where people can do all sorts of wonderful things within London and wider across the world. And I think BITC has to look very carefully at what its goals are in terms of businesses and how businesses can make a difference and focus through businesses on actually helping the communities around, uh, whether it be.
be in London or much wider. I think it's quite important that the BIC doesn't just focus on the leaders of business, but actually encourages those leaders to support junior people coming through. And, and we talked about this earlier, but I know it's very, very important for BITC to encourage the leaders to grow the, pe the junior people who will be the future leaders of tomorrow and to have networks like um, the Giving Game Day, the Volunteering Day, which is part and parcel of that. But I think it's really, really important that the BIC doesn't lose sight of that. It's really important to be very central to what they're doing because I do think that you know people will actually move fairly quickly through the ranks and through their businesses and they will be the leaders. So it's, it's a dual approach. It's actually engaging the leaders, which is done through various committees, and absolutely right, focusing very, very carefully on the areas when they can really make a difference, and perhaps there aren't others necessarily focusing on that, and making sure that if there are others focusing on it, that they, they, they engage with others, and don't, don't treat this as a competition. I think that's quite important, but look at the, what are we trying to achieve in BITC? What is our goal here? It is to make that difference. It is to engage those businesses in, in really bringing about change in their communities, and whether it be homelessness or whatever it might be, and focusing that. If there are other charities engaged, then, then engage those charities and work with them. And I also think it's very important, the world is shrinking, and I think BITC has to work on a more global platform. That's also quite important. The BITC programme, which Evershed's are particularly involved in, is Giving Game Day. Why is this an important initiative for your company to invest in? We've supported Giving Game Day. It's had various names <laughs> for the last 10 years. Um, I personally supported it for 10 years. I actually found uh, a shirt the other day with uh, 2002 on it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have supported it for many years. It is absolutely core, uh, as I've said earlier, to the vision and values of this firm. It's interesting that last year, 27% of our employees who participated in the Giving Game Day were new to volunteering. You know, it's a 27% increase, and it, it shows the value in, in continuing to support this volunteering day, the one day in the year when collectively we can make real difference across the globe now, now it's international, but previously in the UK. It also fits with the various initiatives done by each of our, we have a corporate responsibility partner in each office, they support that within our, our firm. It also helps us knit our offices across the world together. We have many offices now, Latvia is one that just contacted me the other day, Italy, Hong Kong, and it, it sews the firm together with what we're doing across the globe. And so for me, it absolutely ticks every box. Plus also, it allows our employees to have that visibility that they're doing something together and doing something that's good. So it's, it's, it's a tick in every respect because it enables junior individuals to take responsibility for managing a project as well, which they may not have the opportunity to do within the firm. So it's good from a management point of view, as well as what I consider to be the principal reason for doing it, and that's giving something back.